Hey everyone, I've decided to do another rolling uh, review video, and this time I'm rolling with uh, Erica Mete, my assistant, and uh, this, view, this video is more for about showing some of the ways that I uh, use pressure and control. Uh, when I roll, that's really what I focus on the majority of the time. I don't really hunt submissions that much. Um, uh, because I, I'm a firm believer that if you master control, the submissions come easy. So a lot of what I do is I study kind of how to apply my weight on somebody when I roll and also how to break down their shields. Um, rather than run around the shields, a lot of times I try to, you know, put weight on the shields and then use angle adjustments to either crush the shields, pin the shields, or move around the shields, but in a kind of a small way. And so I'll go through a few of the ways that I do this here. Now, again, this is not a really competitive role. Um, we're, you know, mostly playing around some, uh, but this is kind of indicative of how I often will roll. So right away, uh, two things that I focus on heavily with my controls, and that's either going for head control or controlling the elbow. Um, it's very hard for a person to defend both at the same time. Uh, if he keeps his elbow close to his body, it usually allows me to go to the head control. And if his elbow opens up, that means I'm going to work to occupy the space inside his elbow. Now, we'll break down the elbow a little bit more. Some of the things I like to do, and you'll, if you watch in the video, you'll see me do it, is if I can't get the elbow away from his body, I'm often going to pin it and try to force the forearm down. So I'll use my knees or my hips or my arms sometimes. Uh, so he's keeping his elbow tight, but his uh, forearms, I can usually pin away from his body and then I'll pin. So if I can't get under or inside his elbow, I get on top of his elbow and pin his arm. Uh, I just did this a lot coming up just because I trained with so many big, strong guys. And uh, I always wanted to try to isolate their arms away from each other so that they couldn't defend or use both arms strength at once. And again, you'll see that if I can't get the arm, then I go to the head control. That's actually the majority of my game is head control. And uh, I'll discuss this, or I'll show this in my uh, instructional, but I use my hands, my arms, my head, my hips, my knees, and you'll even see that here in the video some, to control his head. And again, at the same time, I'm switching back and forth between controlling his head and controlling his elbows. And so this becomes very uh, frustrating for the person on top to have to defend on multiple fronts and the whole time I'm doing this I'm actually using my weight which forces him to usually uh, try to push me away giving me access to the elbows. A couple quick things I paused right here to show. Uh, one is if I can't beat the elbow and I can't control the head I'll often go north-south. Now to stop him bridging or to try to roll up or do any of that stuff you see how I pinned his at least one of his feet to his hips. Um, I don't always do this, but it's a good thing if I have somebody I know who's maybe going to be explosive or bridge or try to roll up and take my back. And you can see here from the north-south position where I can actually use that often to pin his arm away from his body. So I work to pin the arm away, then I'm going to isolate the other arm, using it to pin, setting up sort of a Kimura-type position. Mostly I'm just holding his hand. Notice I'm really down low on his wrist to make his arm weak. And from here I'm just kind of playing around a little bit. So this is one of my favorite trap positions, and it's kind of similar to when you can uh, trap from side control the opponent's far arm between your arms, and you can kind of go back and forth between uh, Kimura, uh, Americana, and straight arm lock, because he's kind of stuck between that situation. I will often use my legs the same way, so I'll have um, my shin over his uh, arm, pinning his arm. I'll have my hip side shin over it, and I'll switch back and forth between the head side shin, and then sometimes just let his foot arm between my legs. So I just kind of go back and forth between those three positions, all of which give me various options. You can see here that Ericon's doing a good job of keeping his head on the mat, but he has built that frame in front of my neck. So in order to stop him pushing me away, you'll see with my right hand I latch onto his collar. I do this a lot from this sort of a case of position. Uh, so it stops the guy pushing me back and maybe walking his hips out or throwing a leg over my head if I can't get the head control. So you can see that uh, Ericon 
built a frame under my neck, got a good strong grip on my collar. What I was worried about was him bridging me north and then trying to hip escape. So I switched my hips and sit back a little bit. Um, I don't have the collar grip with my right hand as I normally like to do because he's kind of blocking me a little bit. But you see that I take my left hand and I take the lapel and I punch it to the mat. Normally I you know, want to reach behind his head and feed it to the other hand. But often if I, this is all I could get, I'll be happy with that. I'll just kind of punch the uh, lapel to the mat, pinning that shoulder. Um, Notice again, I'm turning my head to the outside of his wrist. I don't want him to be able to switch over to any sort of choke by shooting his left hand underneath his right hand um, and trying to maybe put me back in guard with a choke already set. Okay, so there's something really important I do here that's uh, crucial to my game. I don't cover it a lot in my instructional. Um, it's part of what I call twos and nines, which is I tend to work at extremes. I'm either going to really smother and control the head, or I'm going to keep my weight on his stomach and maybe control his hips. Uh, too often people put the weight on the chest in the middle. Um, the problem is that that's a bone structure. It doesn't really fatigue your opponent, and it puts you within all his power zones. So often I will ride my weight back on his stomach, and uh, you're going to see that starting to fatigue, uh, Eric Conde starting to get desperate. So he's going to try to roll on his side. He doesn't have to go far, just a slight angle change, and he can take a lot of the weight off. So you're going to see me collect that far elbow and pull him flat on his back again. That way he's taking all of my weight on his stomach again. This is going to give me more opportunities when he starts to panic more and make more desperation decisions. You see right here how I open his far elbow and then pin his far, his near elbow after blocking his hip. Again, I kind of go in back and forth the same things. So again, I've been covering the idea that I'm always attacking the arms, pinning the elbows, pinning the arm or getting the elbow away from the body and controlling the head. So again, I, I attack the head with anything I can to control it. Right now, uh, Eric Khan was doing a great job of, uh, even though I had a collar grip, of uh, keeping his head strong so I couldn't cross face him. Um, but what I use here, you see, is again, I use anything I can to control his head, and I'm going to shelve his head with my leg. So my leg is much stronger. I can scoop up his head. This does a few things. Obviously, it puts him in uh, a lot of discomfort, but it kills his bridge. So a lot of times when I have this side control position, you're going to want to bridge and maybe pull his left arm back in. So I use this to kill the bridge. Real quickly, at my academy, we almost always start from our feet. Um, in this situation, I started. we started down on our knees because uh, my knees had been hurting uh, recently and I wasn't really feeling safe uh, doing takedowns. Um, that said, I encourage people, even if you're afraid to do takedowns, to start wrestling from your knees so you learn how to manage upper body control and get your balance uh, without having to do maybe hard takedowns. One thing I want to point out that I do here, uh, I was working into one of my favorite takedowns, which is I catch a front headlock sort of chin strap position and I'll work to the side, hook the leg, and turn him over. Well, he did a good job of sitting his body back down, but I actually had the chin strap, and this is one of my favorite things to do to turtle, was I pulled his chin uh, towards me, pulling him onto his side uh, into me. Instead of uh, taking the back, I didn't really want to deal with uh, trying to break down a turtle um, and take a long time. So since I had already the chin strap, just pulled him back into me. <laughs> so 
so a couple of really important things I did in that last uh, movement there. Uh, one is to get rid of the frame in front of my neck instead of trying to pummel over the top, which would give him the underhook. Uh, I come from the bottom side, the hip side, and pin his arm to the ground. I use this a lot to clear frames off my necks. Often I'll even keep the, the pin, uh, that way he can't reframe my, my, my neck instead of trying to refight for the underhook. Um, now I had the uh, arm under his head, but it was he was keeping a very strong head posture, so I wasn't really able to give him the, uh, the cross face the way I wanted. So I pulled my hand out, cut the top of his head, broke his neck posture into me, and then I was uh, able to turn his face and get the uh, shoulder of justice. One thing that's really important, and I'll cover this in my instructional pressure instructional, is I don't just control the head one way. People just think I'm going to have one cross face. I control his head on multiple axes so I can bring his chin towards his chest, as I did earlier when I shoved it with my leg. I can turn his head to towards me, away from me. Uh, I can bring his ear to one shoulder or another, or I can often combine these. Um, and again, it's not just my hand that does this. I will use my knees to do this, my hips to do this, my shoulder to do this, my head to do this, my arms to do this, my hand to do this. So I have multiple tools to attack his head in multiple directions. Um, it's very important for me that I'm always controlling his head direction because then I control where his power goes. You see here that Aircon has trapped my arm, so I know that I'm uh, liable to get Upa to that side. Um, so you notice how I shift my weight off to the side and clamp my heel into his hip. Uh, this makes it hard for him to go to the elbow escape, but also keeps my balance off to the side so he can't Upa me. that elbow pull again to flatten about again and keep the weight completely on his stomach with him flat on his back. I can't emphasize how important that is to really uh, crush the uh, opponent's um, cardio. You see here, Aircon is collecting the gi behind me. Um, I think he was going to try to roll up, put his foot in the gi, and uh, take me over the top, uh, which is why I immediately put my head, my body onto his head, turned his face, so that it would be very difficult for him to roll up.
Here you can see another example of me controlling the elbow and uh, lifting it up in order to drive him onto, flat onto his back so that he's going to be, uh, again, carrying the weight. Uh, in the other situations we did it, I did it, it was from the far side, so I was reaching across, controlling the far arm and pulling at it. But this side, I'm controlling the near side elbow, lifting it up. Uh, this does two things, right? It's very hard for him to shrimp if he can't get his elbow to the ground. And again, uh, he's going to be in perfect position for me to start applying my weight onto him. Okay, I want to cover something else I did there that uh, is a big part of my game. Uh, I'm not doing it a whole lot in this video because we are playing around a little bit, but in general, I keep, when I'm mounted, I keep my upper body very low. Uh, this makes it very hard for him to build frames on his on my hips. Um, I see people sit up way too high and then they're having to chase after the escape. Uh, the person has a lot of speed for escaping. By staying low, I can feel him trying to force in his frames in order to escape. The other thing it allows is if I have to dismount to you know, belly as I just did, I actually can keep my profile very low and just snake my leg across. Often people go to knee on belly from mount and they make a big jump and they jump to the side and drop to knee on belly and already the person is turning in so then they're having to scramble off to side control or try to switch to the other side. Uh, I never gave them that chance by keeping my weight still on top of him, just flipping my foot across, blocking off his hip with my foot. So there's something I'm doing with my head a lot that I'll cover in the instructional, um, but some people may ask, why doesn't he just bring his uh, frame in front of my neck instead of trying to circle it around in front of my neck in order to get his form in front of my, under my chin? Um, it's because uh, there's a wrist lock I set up that way, and Hercon's very wise to that wrist lock, so uh, he'd rather sort of take the chance of bringing the arm around the front and maybe get caught in an arm triangle than to get hit with the wrist lock I use a lot. So it's not that he doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, it's just that uh, he knows the trap I've laid.
So what just happened was incredibly important for why I do the game the way I do, why I do the pressure, why I do the smothering, um, was Ericon turned in and he had the single leg. So you might say, well, why didn't he catch the single leg? Why didn't he fight for the single leg? It was absolutely there. Um, it's because at this point he's too exhausted. Right? He, he had no energy to really fight for it. That's what everything I do is leading up to. I want to be able to beat my opponents when they're more tech for me, when they're better than me, when they do the right thing. <clears throat> and the only way I can do that is by making them fatigued, where they either know what they're doing is the wrong thing and they do it anyway because they're panicking because of the pressure, or they do the right thing, but they don't have the energy to follow up through it. What I really try to stay away from is what so many jujitsu people do, which is, you know, you give me your best game, I give you my best game, we both jump around, we move around, we see who's luckier, we see who's better, we see who's more athletic. This is why I think you see so many jiu-jitsu schools, you look at their uh, Instagrams or their Facebooks and it's all working out the whole time because the idea is to be more athletic than the next guy. My goal is to make you uh, less athletic than me um, and the only way I can do that is through wearing you down and grinding you down. And again, I put him right on his back again where I can make him carry my weight. Um, something I want to explain. So I was known for a long time as being a back guy, um, but I actually don't have any really big slick back take techniques. What I do is I just put so much pressure on people that they want to give me my, their backs. Now here's the important thing. When they would go to give me their backs, I don't take it, right? That's them trying to give me the back under their conditions where they know that they're ready to defend. I actually will only take the back when it's just pure purest desperation that the person is going to give me the back. Um, and even then I may not do it because I can often tap the person with enough top weight um, because they're so desperate. But if I am going to take the back, I don't want them making the decision that they're doing it and they're ready to defend from that position. I want them completely exhausted by the time I get there so I don't have to use as much energy hand fighting and working for the finish. So. Uh, I could have potentially taken the back here, but I, as you can see, I just pull them back and make them carry my weight some more. See here, of course, he again is trying to control my arm, and I use that to then use my knee to pin his arm because he got his arm away from my body following my arm. <laughs> Again, he's giving me trouble with the, his frame, so I use my right arm to pin his lapel to the ground, pinning his uh, shoulder to the ground so I can work uh, one of my other arms. So one last thing I want to cover is the particular way I pass. Um, I use my head to control his head often. Um, and then I use my hands to address his legs. Um, I put myself in the pinning position immediately. I don't try to pass and then go to pin. And again, you can see my focus is always on that head. If I reach with my arms to control his head, I don't have anything to really control his legs. 
So often, again, I'll keep my hips a little bit high, driving forward, putting my head in his head, not his chest. I don't want my shoulder on his chest where he can turn his head and generate power in different directions. I'm controlling where his power is generating. And then I'm going to walk over his legs using my hand to address his knees or his hips or any of that stuff. This is a particular way I like to pass a lot. It's very effective for me against stronger people and uh, very uh, agile people with crazy guards. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, this is my particular style that I use the majority of the time. Again, I'm not a, uh, an athletic guy. I'm not a young guy. And so a lot of my game is based off of control and pressure. Uh, control allows me to limit and predict the options. Uh, pressure allows me to even the odds. Um, so I do a lot of smothering when I'm on top. My goal is never to be on bottom again. Um, so I don't do a lot of jumping around, and for that reason, some people will say that uh, there's not much to my style or that uh, there's not much thought to it, but it's just kind of a, a, a simple style. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of thought into what I'm doing. Um, I'm really always trying to attack their structures, break their structures down. I don't want to fight them when they're in their strong positions. So I'm controlling the heads, I'm controlling the elbows, and I'm... The, you know, uh, putting my constantly making him carry my weight so that he gets his frames out of position, and then I exploit that uh, weakness. And uh, anyway, if you have any questions, you know, please uh, write me and ask. And uh, all this will be covered much more in depth in my uh, pressure and control instructional that I'm working on.